welcome. I think we can start. Thank you for joining our talk. We're going to talk about graph-based machine learning for t um, automated healthcare services. So first we're going to talk about graph, then we're going to talk about graph in the healthcare domain, and then on top of that we're going to talk about machine learning, graph-based machine learning in the healthcare domain. Before I start, I'd like to mention uh, that everything we showed today might not be available as a product, so please do not make any purchasing decisions based on what we demonstrate today. My name is Julia. With me here today is Rachik. We are both from Oracle Labs, which is the research facility from Oracle. We are based here in Zurich in the Prime Tower, and we work on research, database research, compiler, and language research. The agenda for today, we're going to start, um, my part is going to be first about why would you model your data as a graph, then how can you, like showing you um, how you can model healthcare data as a graph, then we're going to go into a demo where we show our, um, um, our graph um, analytics engine and our graph query language, and then Ritchik is going to talk about how we can apply machine learning, graph-based machine learning to predict diagnosis for healthcare. And then he's going to talk about knowledge graphs and recurrent neural networks, our solution to how we should do diagnosis prediction. He's going to show an empirical validation and some concluding remarks. So let's start with the basics. What is a graph? When we talk about graph, we talk about entities that are vertices and relationships in between that are edges. Thinking about the healthcare domain, we can have entities like, for example, patients who are admitted at a hospital. Then you have, for example, diagnosis or treatments. <coughs> Our model that we use when we talk about graph is the property graph model, where you have labels that identify the, the types of the vertices and edges. So if coming from the relational space, you would say that these are the table names and the properties would are the things that describe the an entity more. So you have, like, for example, um, if you have a patient, you could have properties like a name, age, date of birth, and then uh, this is the graph model that we're going to use throughout this talk. So we have patients with some properties, then we have admissions, which basically means that patients are admitted to a, a venue. We can have properties like ID, venue, and then there the, we have an, a relationship, an edge in between that could have a date um, or other properties. Then, after an admission, a patient gets a diagnosis, so we have the edge diagnosed with, and based on that, a procedure. So this is the model that we're going to use um, in this talk. And what we did is basically we took a medical, um, medical data set and built, um, loaded it into our graph analytics engine, and then we um, so this is a, a big data set, and then we have our property graph query language, PGQL, where we query the graph, and this is what the demo is going to be about. So the first question that we can ask is why would we do that? Why would we, instead of using, um, for example, tables, why would we model our data as a graph? And there are some benefits. First of all, um, when we think about graph, it can be an intuitive data model for some specific domains. So, for example, if you think about how you model data sometimes as a mind map, where you have um, some, some entities and then you draw relationships. So it can be more intuitive. Then Richik is going to more talk more about the advantage of aggregate information uh, over heterogeneous data sources. And then when you think about the performance when you do a couple of joins for like over multiple tables, then we have the advantage of um, fast query languages that where you can um, have performant queries for multi-hop relationships. And finally, we, uh, what we're also going to show in the demo, that we have data visualization and interactive exploration in this um, graph context. So now talk about the, I'm going to talk about the technologies. So first, um, in the demo, I'm going to show three things. The first thing is the graph analytics framework, which is called PGX, which stands for Parallel um, Graph Analytics Framework. And there are two aspects to it. First of all, there are 35 built-in graph algorithms. So when you think about graph algorithms, like maybe the most known is uh, PageRank, the, um, or, there are weekly, or you can run weekly connected components, or some other clustering algorithms out of the box in, the, uh, in PGX. The other thing is uh, query language. So when you think about querying a relational database, we have a query language for um, our graph um, data that we want to query. So, for example, if we look at this example query, when we think about the graph model we have before, 
where we have a patient that was admitted to a um, hospital and we want to, for example, find the patient with the most admissions. <coughs> and then we can have a query that has similar constructs to SQL. So we have select, where you can say I want to select the patient and then basically want to count the edges in between to um, the admissions. And we have a from, like in SQL. And then we have this additional construct, like um, where you have different parentheses for vertices and edges. So for example, the in the match here, you would see you have a node with the type patient that has an edge in between that was uh, admitted to admissions. And then you have what you have in SQL, like where, and then group by, order by, limit, and offset. We're going to go more into detail during the demo. Then one thing we think about is how we can apply these graph algorithms and the um, graph query languages into different domains. So today we're going to focus on health science. So as we discussed, we can we take the data model that is usually standard in different domains and then build a standard graph model. So for healthcare, it would be, for example, patients, admissions, diagnoses, procedures. And we also think about the financial space. So there you can think about having customers that are connected with edges to accounts, addresses. Maybe you have alerts from different systems, institutions like banks, and then connections to some blacklists. So basically the point is that we take the, um, we try to apply this graph research that we're doing to various domains. Today we're going to focus on health science. So that's it. So I would like to start with the, the the demo. So for the demo, um, the technology that we're going to use is called um, Oracle Labs Data Studio. It's a notebook approach from Oracle. So when you think about notebooks such as Zeppelin or IPython, this is basically the Oracle approach. And you can run any programming language, like for example, uh, Python, Spark, R in paragraphs. But what we did is the technologies that I talked before, um, PGX, so you basically you can lo load your um, data into a graph. And then you, we also have graph visualization, and you can also use uh, PGQL to query your graph. <coughs> so that's what the demo, so what I'm going to show in the demo is basically first that you load the, we have some healthcare data, then we modeled it as a graph and we're going to explore the data a bit with some queries and then we're going to show a graph visualization and then I'm going to um, basically make the transition <coughs> to the machine learning part. So let's jump into the demo. So when we talk about notebooks, um, so this is would be one notebook where you have different paragraphs where you can write different languages. So for example, we specify the language for each paragraph. So we could also write Python code here, as I said, or R or Spark. But um, what I'm gonna, what I would like to talk about is more the, um, the PGQL and PGX. So um, what we did here is basically we loaded already this graph that um, we saw before with the patient's admissions into our PGX, our graph analytics engine. And um, I don't want to go into the details, but it basically we stored this graph into um, the variable graph. And then we're going to now use it and query it with our query language. <coughs> so one thing we could think about, we want to, for example, find the number, the, um, the count of different diagnoses. So what are the diagnoses in our data set that are most common? So we could select the diagnosis and want to count them from um, our graph. We just want to match it to our vertex. And then we say that this should be a diagnosis. And we group it and count um, as you would do in SQL. <coughs> and um, so we support various visualizations. And then you can say, for example, uh, pontitis or diabetes are in um, the most um, diagnosis in our data set. Another query, so this is the query we just saw before where we uh, want to have the patients with the most admissions to a hospital, for example. Um, and this is the same query before, where you match the uh, a vertex, a patient with an edge to admissions. Basically, you count the edges um, and find the patients with the most admissions. So we do here the exploration of, of data. I mean, we, we loaded our data in our graph database. We queried and do some data exploration. The other thing that this technology provides is um, graph visualization. So when we have a more sophisticated bat pattern um, that we want to look for in our graph, for example, pa patients that are admitted and then they got a diagnosis and then um, a, a procedure, 
um, because of this uh, diagnosis, then we can specify all the types uh, that we want to have. So we want to have a patient that has all the admissions, then we want to have all the um, di diagnosis and the procedures. So what, um, again, in the legend, you can see the different node types that we have that we just discussed before of the graph model that we used, and then we have also some edge types. So if when you look at the visualization, you have this patient that you want to look at. So you want to look at a single patient that has also other properties. So this is the name, Gerald Hilpert, and you have also date of birth, first name, last name, gender. And then you want to see all the admissions of this single patient, and then you also see the treatments and the diagnosis, what happened after this. So this is basically just looking at the data set. So the, what we want to talk about now is that we get a, a patient that comes to the hospital, and we have an admission, and we basically, the orange and the red part, we uh, get this information, and with uh, recurrent neural nets, we want to predict the diagnosis and the um, all the treatments, everything that comes after. And this is what Richik is going to talk about. OK, so for this part, basically, I will start with some background regarding the healthcare domain. Uh, and followed by our approach, which we call KGRN, is how we combine knowledge graphs with recurrent neural networks. And then I will show in practice how good it is. And then I will conclude the talk. So starting with some background regarding knowledge graph, so how exactly does it look? So we have basically like in the one that you see here, we have like countries and they're connected based on some relations like uh, Latvia is connected to Belarus or Russia. They share some border. The cool thing about graphs is it gives an intuitive uh, representation of the data and it allows us to combine the data from different heterogeneous sources. So and that's the one of the main benefit of how it's used in security also for instance and recently there is a lot of activity and research going on in how we can employ graph based machine learning for learning on this kind of knowledge graphs to take some concrete examples i will start with a sample retail knowledge graph so what are the entities in this retail knowledge graph we have product we have category and we have clients how are they related? So there is clients who purchase some products, and the products belong to some categories, and clients can also follow some categories. For instance, there's a client one who purchased a white Nike shoe, and this shoe belongs to this category of shoes. And there are clients who can follow this category of shoes, so they get uh, uh, notifications whenever there's some new uh, shoes available. And so this is the kind of a static information, and this builds up in the knowledge graph. However, there are some information, for example, if we decide to build a knowledge graph of six months data, so it's a sliding window. So this purchase activity is not a static information there. So it's a dynamic because in the knowledge graph, before the six months activity, it won't be there. And also, it won't be there after the six months activity. So these are the kind of dynamic links in the knowledge graph. And the thing I mentioned, like we can aggregate information from heterogeneous sources. So the example is the one in blue. For example, there are shoes uh, like the jeans fabric converse, which belongs to this category of shoes, which shares the same material with Levi's jeans, which belongs to the category of trousers. And this information we can easily append in a graph. It's just a relation here. So this is a sample example of a retail knowledge graph. So now, since we are looking in the healthcare domain, so let's take a healthcare knowledge graph, for example. So as Julia mentioned, so in the healthcare, whenever a patient gets admitted to a hospital, we have something called admissions. So here, even the admission is a node, but it has a lot of properties inside it. It's like admission in the ICU care units, basically, it can range from three hours to three weeks. And during this whole period, you have a lot of medications, lab results, all of this are there. So this whole thing is there as a property of this entity, basically. So it's a state which is varying over time. And we want to predict, basically, the admissions, diagnosis correlated with this admission. And as I mentioned, in the healthcare knowledge graph, we can append external information. So what we do here is like we take some public resources. For example, there are diseases. 
which are connected with symptoms. So this we can get from medical studies, we can build up this knowledge graph, so there are doctors also who can append this information. And for every admission, we have something called a pre-diagnosis. So it's like when the patient comes to the hospital, the doctor sees some of the symptoms and says, like, okay, this patient might have this pre-diagnosis. So we use this kind of pre-diagnosis information to connect the admissions to some diseases or symptoms. And this are kind of the, the blue part basically is coming from the external heterogeneous source. And the admissions are coming from the internal hospital database. Uh, so this is a sample example of a healthcare knowledge graph. So what are the features of this knowledge graph? So this knowledge graph builds up on t over time, as I mentioned. So we'll get many unknown, unseen disease and symptoms relations with new medical studies coming up. We'll have more patient records as patients get admitted to the hospital. And as I mentioned also, like the dynamic properties of the entities, which are admissions in our case, so it varies over some long duration, and the patient goes through different states. Like you have medications of the patient throughout the day, and you have different lab tests conducted on the patient for finding out the proper diagnosis of the patient. And how do we construct these knowledge graphs? So as I mentioned, we have some internal information. So this is taken from the hospital databases, for example, admissions. And we have the external information. So this we can build up also the, like from publicly available resources. Okay, so what is the concrete learning objective here? So I will take a sample visualization. So this is a sample visualization of how admission looks like, for example. So we have lab test results. So whenever a patient starts, uh, so that's the, when the patient is getting admitted. So we have the admission start. And there are four types of events that we classify, uh, like we categorize into. One is a lab test result. So this is like, uh, there can be like, one example is a platelet count of the patient. And then there are fluids that is going into the patient, there are fluids that are coming out of the patient, and then there are medications for the patient throughout this timeline. So given this whole admission, so we try to find the diagnosis for this admission. And how does currently the state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms do that? So as you see, at the end of the admission, we have an admission discharge where the patient is discharged, basically. And so at the end of the discharge, what the hospitals do, they have a discharge note summarizing everything throughout the whole admission. And the machine learning algorithms, for example, just take this whole discharge summary and try to predict the diagnosis from it, which are, for example, it can be like, it can be multiple diagnoses connected to admission, for example, hypertension or like some chronic heart disease. What we want to do is like, this kind of models basically is helpful only at the end of the admission when you have this discharge summary. But we want to have some models which can do the whole prediction during the admission timeline. So that's our learning objective. So here we present our work, which is the KGRN. So it's how we can combine this additional external information from knowledge graphs with recurrent neural networks to get the benefit of both the worlds. So how do we modify this learning objective for recurrent neural networks? This one is like quite uh, trivial for machine learning algorithms. It's like we take the admission, we just split the whole admission into some like two hour intervals. So it's like, let's say this admission was 10 hour. We just split into five two hour intervals. And for each interval is just like a time series data that we can feed it to a recurrent neural network. This was trivial. So, and for people who don't know about recurrent neural network, it's just, uh, uh, a time uh, like it takes in time series information to predict a time series output. Uh, so I will start with some examples. For example, it's used in a lot in stock market predictions, where the you can basically map the problem to time series events, and also in machine translation examples, like you can translate some language from French to German, French to English, and. So how exactly does it work? This is a, just a very high overview. We have something like a time varying input x, and it's fed to this recurrent neural network, which gives us a time varying output o. In our case, x is the two hour interval chunks of admissions. So as you see there, each of this chunk is basically a xt. And that's fed to the recurrent neural network, and we are trying to predict the diagnosis there. So this was trivial how we can apply this healthcare pre uh, diagnosis prediction with the help of neural network. So just to go into a bit of more details, so 
the healthcare data is not uniform. It's not normalized. We have some events like a one point event, like a medications, and then we have some events which vary over some time interval, like fluids into the patient. And for recurrent neural networks, it requires some normalized data. So we try to do some data processing, which uh, like converting the uh, the interval data to some one-point events. Like, for example, this interval data here is converted to some three-point intervals. So the summation of the three-point intervals is basically the total fluid that is given in that interval. So this is some normalization techniques that we do to make the data ingestible by recurrent neural networks. And what exactly do we do with the recurrent neural network? So this part is basically what we have the admission encoder module what it gives is the encoding of admission. Encoding is just a vector representation of admission. So what it shows here is like we have four types of events. So there are the lab test results, the fluids into the patient, fluid outs of the patient, and prescriptions. And as I sh mentioned earlier, we partition into two hour chunks. And for each of the chunk is basically consists of these four events. We use some aggregators. Uh, we tried with different aggregators, like this is some classical things, so like max aggregator, mean aggregator, and then we feed it to the recurrent neural network. So that's the same thing like I mentioned earlier. The main thing to take away from this part is what we want to get is this red thing here, admission encoding. So this is basically encoding of the whole admission. It's a vector representation of the given admission here. And then we use that encoding to predict the diagnosis in this one. So we did not use knowledge graph till now. So where can we bring in the knowledge graph. So as I mentioned, we added some external information. So all this exploration till now just included the information from the admissions. But now we want to bring some additional external information, which is this diagnosis symptoms relations. And graphs are most suitable for this purpose. We can define these relations. As I mentioned, we can use this pre-diagnosis to connect the admissions to this external knowledge graph now. And we then try to get this relevant admissions for any given admission. So what is exactly a relevant admission? So it's like I have a current admission, and I want to find all other previous admissions that would be relevant to this one in from the knowledge graph. What I do is like I do a nearest neighbor extraction on the given knowledge graph. So for every input admission, we try to find the top k nearest admissions in this knowledge graph. How we do it? So as Julia mentioned, so like in PGX, we have like around uh, 35 plus uh, inbuilt graph algorithms implemented. We take one of those, which is like a weighted personalized page rank, and the weights are coming from the weights in the knowledge graph ages. So it's the disease and symptom age. So the age where there is how much importance has a symptom towards a disease. And then for admission and symptom disease, we use a kind of a string similarity between the pre-diagnosis of the admission and the actual symptoms and disease. So that's the weight that we are using. And then we apply this uh, weighted personalized page rank algorithm directly on this knowledge graph. And we get a personalized score for every input admission. And then we get the top k neighbors. So how does it look like? Here, for example, you have the input admission is the one in red. And then we want to try to get the top two neighbors. And then we get, based on the personalized scores, we get the top two neighbors from there. Now that we have the neighbors, how do we include this information in the model that we showed earlier? So as I mentioned earlier, the thing that we extracted from that part was the encoding of the admission. So in this one, we just aggregate the neighbors diagnosis information. And here also, like we used some same aggregators. Here we just append the concatenate the vectors of the diagnosis with the ones that we uh, got the encoding of the admission. And then we use this for our diagnosis prediction. So this is a very high overview of the, what the model looks like. So the admission encoder was coming from the recurrent neural network, which gave us the final encoding of the admission. And then the, for every neighboring admission, we have multiple diagnoses associated with those admissions. And then we, those we use as the encoding of the neighbors, basically. And finally, we use a conc uh, concatenated vector of all of this as into the prediction model, which is again a fully connected neural network uh, with the ReLU activations and to predict the diagnosis, basically. So that was the overview of the KGRN architecture. And so now let's see how it performs in practice on some real data sets. So for the evaluation, we took this MIMIC data set. Uh, it's available publicly. It's, uh, 
relational database that contains basically patient informations from this intensive uh, care units in some medical center in Israel. And what it has is like a, uh, information for like 46,000 patients uh, and like each patient on average has a bit more than one admission and some millions of uh, events for each of the four types of events that we were looking into. Uh, so what we want to input to each of this uh, uh, you know, to this neural network is uh, admission and we want to predict the diagnosis. The diagnosis prediction here is a multi-level multi-class uh, classification which is like for because for every admission you can have multiple diagnoses. That's a multi-level and multi-class because you have like 50, uh, di uh, 50 diagnoses to predict for. So so in our experimentation, we saw that with the baseline, where we don't include any neighbor information, we get around 85%. And with the KGRN, where we include the neighbor information via the graph, we can improve it by, in this case, like it's 1% in this data set. So to see exactly why we get this benefit over the baseline, we also looked into the data set and saw some concrete examples. So that one is uh, admission which the red lines there show basically the actual ground truth. So those are the four diagnoses uh, related to the admission. So if you see the baseline, which is in yellow, and the KGRN is in violet, so those what it shows in the y-axis is the probabilities that these two models predict for this, each of these diagnoses. And we see that the baseline does not predict any of the ground truth. But KGRN predict one of the four ground truths. And where it's coming from, we see, we try to analyze and go inside the neighbor's diagnosis. And we said, OK, there is neighbor. One of the neighbors had a diagnosis, which was actually one of the ground truths. So it's pulling from there. But there are neighbors which uh, does not have any of the positives. And it does not impact the KGRN also. So this was one example. Now, as I mentioned, so we wanted to get the prediction probabilities throughout the admission timeline and not just at the end of the admission discharge, uh, like the current state of the art models. So what we did here is like this, you see in the, the timeline is basically just for a single admission. And during this admission, we had all of these events, like the lab events, then the inputs to the patients, the output uh, fluids out of the patient and the prescriptions. And as soon as the patient is admitted, we can start predicting like diagnosis of the patients. And uh, yeah, so this is example of how we can do it in dynamic manner throughout the patient, ad, uh, like uh, throughout the admission duration in this case. So to conclude, basically now what we presented here was some novel approach to show how we can combine the information from heterogeneous sources, uh, like I mentioned, some publicly available knowledge in form of this uh, disease symptom knowledge graph, and we can aggregate this information in our medical database and uh, try to improve the quality of the diagnosis prediction for current healthcare systems. The thing is like this architecture was not limited to just healthcare. We, we, this is applicable also to retail, security, financial fraud detections, then click ad frauds, all of these cases. So anywhere, uh, like wherever we can have some this knowledge graph representation, uh, then we can, this architecture applies to all of those cases. So for the next few minutes, then Julia will talk about the where you can get all of this architecture yeah. samples. Yeah. So first, I want to summarize what we talked about in, the, in this talk. And then I would like to show some links on where you can try out um, the different technologies that we talked about. So first, we talked about the benefits of graph models, why you would model data as a graph, um, how you can um, apply graph models to different uh, domains, like healthcare or financial or retail. Then we showed uh, different technologies. First, the uh, uh, PGX, the Parallel Graph Analytics Framework, where you have built-in graph algorithms such as PageRank, weakly connected components, or anything, um, um, extra algorithms, sh shortest path algorithms. And then you have PGQL, which is the property graph query language, where you can query the, your graph data, which is when the syntax is similar to SQL. And then we showed uh, Data Studio, which is a notebook approach where you can also, in addition to run all the other languages that you're used to when, uh, when, when developing or doing data science with notebooks, you can use the uh, PGX and you can use PGQL. And so we showed, we had the demo where we loaded the graph into PGX, 
so um, we basically so we took the um, medical data set, we loaded it into PGX, we queried, did some queries, some um, exploration, and then we have this graph um, visualization, and then we talked about um, knowledge graphs and neural networks and how to combine that to predict the diagnosis of um, patients based on admissions and certain um, in, like properties of admissions. Then uh, we talked about empirical validation and the summary. So where can you try this out? So there is a link uh, for PGX that, that you can download. It's on the Oracle Tech Network. And um, there's also the link to our property graph query language um, website and specification. So please try it out and thanks for your attention. If you if you would going to compare the approach of the graph against uh, using a database, what would be the performance benefit? You mean like um, yeah, because with I guess machine learning using the graph is because graph would be faster in doing right. all these uh, calculations uh, related to the RNN and the. Yeah, so we have actually two approaches. So we have the um, shared memory PGX approach and also distributed version. So there is, depending on the query there, um, so the main uh, goal of this is to have a high performance graph analytics engine. So there is um, multiple X faster. So there are some research papers based on this. So um, we can talk about that offline. But they, yes, this is the goal to have like, um, as I said before, also multi hop queries faster. Okay. So depending on the query, it's like up to 10x. Okay, thanks. <coughs> More question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.